They do nothing about the Pakistani rape gangs. And then if you're impertinent enough to grumble about their connivance with paedophiles, they give you an ASBO. Among those on the receiving end of their vindictiveness is Samantha's mother, Debbie Cole, who joins me now. Um, Debbie, you went to that meeting. You wound up getting an ASBO. What did they say you'd done to deserve that ASBO? Hi, Mark. Lovely to see you. Um, they said that I'd... Um encouraged a man to climb over the barrier. They said I'd thrown a missile. They said I had um, swore abusive language to the council leader. I didn't do any of those things at all. Um, they said I disrupted the meeting. They, they, they've done a list of all, a lot, all sorts, really, which is all untrue. And, and so they basically complained that you were swearing at the council leader. Yeah, I, I, I won't repeat what they've said I've said because, you know, it's before the mm. nine o'clock was. <laughs> but, but I didn't say it because I don't say it. <laughs> but there's my antisocial behaviour. Um, verbal yeah. abuse, there you are, verbal abuse, um, language mm. inciting, um, and threatening, a, threatening a journalist, apparently. I threatened a journalist. Um, mm. oh, there's, all, there's, all sorts of, there's all sorts that they threatened. Throwing a missile, I didn't throw a missile. Matt. It's very That's weird all. that uh, this, council, this council, which did nothing about the rape gangs in Oldham, year in, year out, but suddenly it's, it gets very upset if at a council meeting uh, citizens come and complain about the inaction uh, of Oldham Council, and you guys, they pun they're far more eager to punish you than they are to pun uh, punish the gang rapists. Yeah, they are. They, 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 they've, uh, they, they've done a number of things to residents in the, in the Oldham um, community. Um, they've, they've sent antisocial behaviour threatening letters to everybody. Um, they've, they've actually uh, breached my data as well um, re regarding sending mm. my ad for. Um, but what, mm. they, what they've done, you see, what, the thing is, Mark, I've been trying to support Sam. Sam is, is, is I've adopted Sam. I'm not a biological mother. Mm. I am a mother mm. who's a, she's adopted me and I've adopted her. As far as I'm concerned, she's my daughter um. and I'm a mother. So she gets a, she gets a bollock in when she needs one. Um, but S Sam is a beautiful mm. girl, beautiful girl. And the way that they've treated her has mm. been absolutely appalling. When, when I first went up to the council chambers to fight for the, 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 the children of the town, uh, the council leader at the time, Sean Fielding, wanted to call it all birthday slice. It was all birthday slice. But yet the council leader had just gone out, mm. Aru Shah, she said um, in March that, yes, grooming has been going on in Oldham and it's still happening in Oldham. So you've got two council leaders, both Labour, one saying it's all birthday slice and calling all the residents birthday liars, and the other one saying, oh, I'm sorry, yes, it mm. is happening. Now this council leader is sending asbos to anybody that wants to disagree with anything that they say. Uh, so, Samantha was very, uh, Samantha was eager to uh, speak to the, the people who were conducting the uh, inquiry that uh, the report came out uh, last month. She was keen to speak to them. The council actively obstructed her participation in that inquiry. Why would they do that? Well, they didn't want the truth getting out there uh, because they have massively, massively failed at, at Samantha. Um, Sam um, desperately wanted to speak to uh, Malcolm Newsom and Gary Ridgeway. Um, and I, um, mm. as, a, as a mom, because I, I contacted uh, mm. Maggie Oliver uh, and the foundation, Maggie Oliver Foundation, mm. and the, that was the only mm. way that we could actually get Sam in to, to do her interview. But then when she did do her interview, um, we do have a recording of um, Gary Ridgway then stating that the council didn't want um, Sam to be interviewed. They they tried they pushed against it really really hard. They said that she would have committed suicide um, if she had been interviewed. She wouldn't have committed suicide. She's a she's a she's a really really strong girl now. 
she's she's absolutely fantastic. Mm. But they did their utmost. And Gerard Jones, the um, the executive for uh, children's services at Oldham Council, when Brian Orbin actually asked him in a full council meeting not so long ago, he bare lied in front of everybody and said. Nobody stops, Sam. But we've got Gary Ridgway. We have a recording of Gary Ridgway yep. stating that very thing. Plus it's, in the, plus, it's in the review. Why do you think that Oldham Council uh, seems far uh, keener on uh, protecting these gang rapists than actually doing anything for the girls of Oldham? I think that boils down to the put to the to the labor to the labor vote. I think it is a political thing uh, because in in Oldham, mm. a lot of the labor supporters are from the Muslim community. So to keep to keep them mm. voting for them, I think that's why they've protected them. I think that's why they, it's a, it has been a political thing. Uh, Jim Mann has often been Jim McMahon, but, who's the MP for Oldham Right and West, has been seen at the uh, mm. at the mosque stanking them all for the votes. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of connections between the councillors and people who were involved in these rape gangs. And the guy who ran the rape gangs was actually employed uh, by the council. As we know, these useless policemen seem very friendly uh, to them. You, you, said, you, you said your daughter was strong. After what she went through that night when she was 12 years old, you, you're either strong or you're utterly destroyed by it. And fortunately, Samantha seems to have had the strength to overcome it. But the fact is that only two of the men who raped her that night have actually paid any price for it. So there's still something like six or seven of them out there. As I understand it from Oldham, these are networks and the identities of these men are not unknown. Don't you think it's disgraceful that Oldham, Oldham Council and Greater Manchester Police can't, can only find basically a fifth of the men who raped your daughter? It's absolutely appalling, Mark. It's absolutely, it's absolutely appalling what, what, what they've done. The police knew, the police identified um, one of them that went into the police station that actually walked out of the police station with Sam. They also identified the other two that mm. was in the car. They've also, they also arrested one and then let him out on bail, and he's done a runner. Um, so, and that's, mm. that's, that's four or five that, five that I know of. And there are more, there are more. And the police do know one, one, um, of the perpetrators, his wife went to the police station and actually said, my husband has confessed to raping this child. He, this, this guy actually tried to murder his wife. They've, they've not, they've not dealt with that mm. at all. Great amount of police. They just don't want to, they've just, they've just not dealt with it at all. Do you think uh, do you think Greater Manchester Police uh, and the council? It, we used to have the presumption that there were that people were so revolted by paedophilia. You don't want to be a paedophile in an English prison, supposedly, because no. all the other prisoners will do terrible things to you because everyone is revolted by paedophilia. In Oldham. Nobody who matters seems to be revolted by paedophilia. Uh, the the councillors are friends with the paedophiles. The policemen are friends with the paedophiles. The social workers are friends with the paedophiles. What's up with that? The council workers were paedophiles. You had Shabir Ahmed that worked for Oldham Council. He he was a member of the Labour Party mm. and he was a paedophile. You also have the Lib Dems Rob Blythe, who was being he was a convicted paedophile for the Lib Dems. He that wasn't reported to, to, mm. to the residents of Oldham either. They have kept Oldham Council have kept so much hidden. And the only thing that I could think of that this is a political this is a political thing that they're doing it and they and they are protecting the politicians. And it has to go straight to the, it has to go all the way to the top. When um, sh um, Sam asked uh, for her information by a, um, a, a gentleman from the Home Selects Committee, um, Keith Baz, he he wrote mm. to Jim McMahon. He was the council leader at the time. Mm. He said, "There's nothing to see here. It's a it's a um, a passage in time, so it's we, we can't look into it. This is a child. This is a twelve year old no. little girl." who was just hanging about with the maids. Mm. 
in a church grounds mm. and she was she was molested right. and then she went to the police station and did the right thing and all that happened now, and i would like to know I would like to know who that desk officer was, because no, none of these policemen have paid a, a price for it. The failures of uh, Greater Manchester Police, all these people are either still employed by uh, the constabulary or they're enjoying their lavish uh, pensions, uh, completely uh, disconnected from the hell that they have caused your daughter and all these other girls. It's quite, uh, it's, it's quite shameful. You're actually, you, you've had a backlash and you've had uh, I gather you've had death threats after this council meeting and you've now actually had to move and you're in an undisclosed location that's right that's right Mark yeah um, after I went up to the council um, chambers to ask a question um, I um, exposed about the council leader Arush Shah was hanging about with a convicted heroin dealer and uh, because of that the backlash has been that I've had threats of kidnap and rape um, so I had to um, mm. speak to my family and I had to flee the town um, I then received a message again I hope you're enjoying where you are I was in Somerset at the time um, and unfortunately uh, because I got that message from that person that, that instigated all of that, I've had to re relocate again. So um, even half of my family now don't even know where I am. That's a terrible thing. You're basically living in hiding uh, because yeah. you wanted the truth of what happened to your daughter to be known mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah. you wanted Oldham Council to do something about it. This is a very corrupt town, Oldham. And there's too many of them. As you know, we've talked about Telford and we've talked about Rotherham. But this is going on in... And, and they always say, well, the report comes out. Well, lessons have been learned. This is all a long, long time ago now. And we've changed everything. They haven't changed at all. We're going to have to go to Oldham and uh, do some uh, reporting on what's going on there. But... Uh, Thank you very much, Debbie, and you take care because, uh, as Debbie has said, she's, she's now basically moving. She's, she's like some, somebody who's been targeted by ISIS and is having to be moved to safe houses every 48 hours. That this should be happening to you in the United Kingdom of uh, 2022. It shames Oldham, it shames Greater Manchester, and it is a national disgrace.